Hello and welcome to Warframe. My name is Todd, also known as Major Mech, and this is of course Warframe. Uh, last time we left off completing most of the objectives we needed to uh, for the Neptune Junction. We only have one more, which is to fight Tal Regor, but before that I didn't want to go over a couple things. Um, so, of course, this is the weekend of the War on Corpus. Uh, of course, last weekend was the weekend of the War on uh, Grenier. Uh, so this time around, it's the War of Corpus. If we complete this event with 100% before the event ends, then effectively um, we'll get a double credits weekend in March, which is pretty cool. So if you are doing any farming right now, definitely focus on Corpus if you uh, have the time. Uh, let's see. So we will fight Tiger Tyregor in a second, and uh, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. I don't think there's any major fixes or anything like that. I did want to go over a couple things real quick, though. Um, so I did change around our builds a little bit. A basic Rhino build. Um, I just kind of slapped in uh, Stretch and Mobilize just because uh, I had them. Uh, there's definitely better ones out there, uh, and this build is definitely not complete. Um, as we kind of get more mods, we'll definitely throw in better stuff. Uh, let's see, so our Vectus, I did change around our Vectus build. I added in our Infected Clip and Stormbringer that we had uh, started to level up, or uh, upgrade. And I also up started upgrading a Serration, so um, our Serration is now pretty good, so we do a lot of damage with our Vectus. Uh, I don't think I changed... A lot with the Vasto, I did throw on Convulsion, but that was about it. Um, our Galantine's build is kind of fleshed out for the moment. This is just a basic Galantine build. Um, you could take Healing Return and put in whatever you'd like, like Life Strike or anything else, really. Um, that's kind of up in the air, but this is a good like starter build if you're just getting started with the melee weapons. That's a pretty good one. But we do also have the Orthos, which we do want to start using. At some point, did we ever? We did not ever put a uh, potato on this, so that's that's okay. Uh, don't really need to put a potato on this. Just I kind of wanted to show it off. So with the Galantine, you have a very good um, combo weapon. Uh, in other words, if your stance is very good, you have a very good weapon overall. But with the Orthos, uh, you kind of have a different style of weapon. So we'll just throw on pressure point. So the Orthos is what I call a quick melee weapon versus the Galantine's like combo weapon uh, or stance weapon. Um, the Orthos you specifically use because while using the Orthos, uh, you have the capability to move at full speed while doing quick melees. Uh, most pole arms have this functionality, so effectively you can quick melee without losing any uh, momentum or like movement speed. Other weapons, if you start meleeing, you will lose uh, movement speed. You'll be downgraded to what they refer to as walking speed, which is kind of the speed without running, of course. Not that all, not all that complicated, but um, it's kind of just. Uh, Coral arms allow you to run through enemies, so you'll kind of be able to get a good sense of that as we're running through this mission. Now, I did change it over to public, because we're going to be fighting a boss. Hopefully, we'll Where get somebody to help us out. Freaks. And of course, Tile Rager's going to insult us as we're trying to get into his mission. Um, yeah, so we're just going to run through this. We're going to run through the junction, and... Uh, once we're done with that, we'll probably start the secondary. We're going to skip that, we don't really need to see it. So, going back to the quick melee thing that I was referring to, you can see that as I'm using this right now, I'm still running at the same speed I would be while running, uh, whereas other melee weapons will actually the slow your speed down. Has made alarming strides in the field of gene repair. His work will not only reverse centuries of deterioration due to excessive cloning, but also allow for stronger, and deadlier genetic molds. Eliminate Regor and put a stop to his work. You can. I'm very excited now. The anticipation. Ooh, I always learn so much. A live dissection. You can uh, also note that the Orthos has. Dissection. No, 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 no. That sounds too humane. Your death will be... painful. Tile Regor has got to use his sensuous voice, of course, to insult us uh, as we're kind of making our way towards him. Um, but 
The Orthos uh, also has another benefit, of course, that it has probably one of the longest range of any standard weapon, um, aside from uh, the whips. Whips have some whips have a longer range than the Orthos does, um, but the Orthos does have the functionality of, like I said, being able to be used while moving um, without losing really any kind of benefit. So if you wanted to potato the Orthos, for instance, and use it, um, you know, you wouldn't be alone in that regard. A lot of people really like pole arms for this very reason. Though lately I've come to uh, the fact that I'm not really the biggest fan of that kind of playstyle of just quick using nothing but quick melees if I'm meleeing. So it's not my preferred weapon. However, um, with the advent of melee 3.0, uh, which they continue to talk about uh, as of late, it's entirely possible that all of those opinions and uh, some of the stuff I've talked about with melee may change. So we'll see in the future, of course. When those updates happen, if I'm still playing through the campaign, of course, I will uh, be um, talking about them and it's kind of explaining how they go down and all the different things that you would need to know to use it effectively. Major thing, though, is if you're focused on melee, uh, the Orthos and the Galantine are fantastic weapons to use. The Galantine is great in its move set. Um, even though it does slow you down, it's still fantastic. Um, the Orthos is great in its quick melee because it doesn't reduce the speed at which you move. What did you see? My data stream went dark. Which, of course, just stands as a very effective weapon, especially on warframes such as Volt, who can increase their movement speed. It will take some time to so that is definitely something to note. Uh, combining the Orthos. Must be feeling guilty. Need to atone. I'll oblige. Let my gavel ring justice off your thin, tin skull. Using the Orthos with a frame like Volt is pretty impressive. Uh, you get the faster movement speed, faster attack speed, and you can you don't lose any of it when using your melee weapon. So you can tell a Tyrellgor is definitely a humble individual, uh, just a giant statue of himself. Hopefully with our Vectis, we'll be able to take it down pretty quickly, though. First so... Uteno. Next, your Lotus. So Tile Regor is very similar to, uh, I think it was Sargus Ruck. In that they're, um, or a lot of Warframe bosses, really, in general, with periods of invulnerability. Uh, so just be aware of that. He will go invulnerable at certain points. When that happens, uh, you'll kind of be just standing around fighting the enemies that he sends at you. Don't be afraid to clear those out when you need to. Okay, so we're on the second phase here. Gonna pull this ocean down on us if I have to! Oh boy. Okay. Looks like he starts breaking the windows. And now we've gone into phase two, which is kind of fighting maniacs along with Tile Regor. Of course, Tile Regor was the, I guess you could refer to him as a genius that uh, created the maniacs. It's more like mad scientist than anything, though. So we need to defeat these maniacs. A couple good hits from our Vectus, and they. should have dressed for a funeral. They go down pretty easily. Where is he? There he is. Oh, he does kind of teleport around, uh, which is kind of annoying, but that's how it goes sometimes. Come back here. Where'd you go? There we are. It is much easier if you have a weapon that can just one-shot most of his health away. Um, our Vectus is doing some work, but we're running low on ammo, actually. I would hate to have to get into a melee fight with Tail Regor. His main attacks are melee focused. He's got a like an axe and sh shield, which is the axe and brunt, and he's also got a set of fist weapons, Come which are the Pokemon weapons. And I'll pound you into a tiny cube. 
And so he breaks the big window Nowhere after breaking the small one. Nowhere and there's no more ground level now. If you fall into that, of course, you'll uh, get teleported back. We'll be fighting a couple maniacs, so this activates phase three. Old Warframe bosses. He's, of course, uh, Tal Regor is, of course, invincible during all of this, but we do have to fight off some maniacs. Shouldn't be too difficult for us. In fact, this should kind of tear him apart. Even the Bombard Maniac. Yeah, a couple good shots and they're done. Forgive me if this kind of gives you a little bit of motion sickness being zoomed in like this, but it's good to be able to do a lot of damage to these uh, enemies. Did, did that guy teleport through a wall? I think that guy might have teleported through a wall. Uh, okay, he's teleported back. Oh, that's Tal Regor. This is for the tube man. So he has that line uh, right there, talk referring to tube men. Um, there was a kind of like a story mission previously in the game, which involved the Tenno killing uh, or destroying his research, specifically the tube men that he was creating, which were kind of like upgraded Grenier uh, bombards. Our pretty near bombard maniacs, that is. And they were meant to be like super, super soldiers, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, we might have to actually go break open some containers. I don't think I'm going to be able to kill him with just my Vasto here. If we can get some sniper ammo, that would be great. Uh, so during this phase, there are little vents, of course, on the side of the arenas. They uh, do open up and. I guess we could try. Worthless, ugly freaks. If we can manage to just break down his shield, we could kind of get to him pretty easily. And our electric procs should help with that. I was really hoping we wouldn't run out of ammo. Uh, let's see, do we have an ammo? We do have an ammo restore. That's actually really useful. Uh, so this is one of the few times you'll ever see me use an ammo restore, just because we don't have any containers. So we're going to stick around it. We're going to wait off using any ammo um, until it's the restorer's given us the maximum we can, because bursting into him is very important. I don't think he regenerates health. I'll be hitting myself later if he actually does, but we just want to make sure that we can get down that shield of his. Oh. The fact that he teleports around so much does make it a little bit more difficult, but... I think we'll manage. Yeah, we are getting through that shield. And that's the end of Tile Regor. So it would have been much easier if we had more sniper ammo throughout that, but we had to use an ammo restore. Oh man. So, of course, that one scorpion that ran into the room uh, managed to set off the alarm for the second time. But now that we've assassinated Tile Regor, we can just run through. We don't really have to worry about any of these enemies. It's probably best that we don't, because we don't have any iron skin, too. And that is a Tile Regor fight. So, from Tile Regor, you can get the Equinox uh, parts. Equinox is probably the most complicated Warframe to build. You have to have two sets of parts. Um, so you need the Equinox Day parts and the Equinox Night parts. Uh, so that means you need Equinox Day Neuroptics uh, systems and chassis, and you need Equinox Night Neuroptics systems and chassis to be able to complete uh, Equinox. Messages have arrived in your inbox. Old Stalker's telling us he's coming for us again, but I don't think we're really worried about him. Yeah, that was pretty much the whole fight. If you did want to farm Tyler Regor, getting Equinox is a highly suggested thing um, you must be early on, guilty. as Equinox is great for farming uh, things like Navigation survival and defense. Equinox is a great frame overall, even at endgame currently. Equinox still performs very, very good, so uh, if you wanted to farm up that four frame, that would be, you know, something I would probably suggest if you're interested in it. Uh, I guess we'll just head on straight into the junction. 
don't think we're going to have too many problems with this junction. Um, let me think. Yeah, I don't think that we run into the hard one. The hard one, uh, from what I remember, is near the very end. There's one junction which I would consider hard because the enemy can pretty much once shot a rhino even with iron skill, so... Alright, well we've got to fight Loki, or a Loki Spectre, which shouldn't be too hard. Um, let's just activate this. Run over, iron skin, roar. Note that Loki does have invisibility, um, can also disarm you. Switch teleport, of course. Loki's a very good frame, but oh, one shot to the head and Loki goes down. Loki's not a very tough frame. Loki's a stealth frame in general, so taking a rhino on head first was not the best idea. If we can farm Loki here in a bit, we may need to, as stealth does come critical at some point. Um, I think we can get Loki on them too. But we also do get a quest now, one that's very important, the second dream. So, let me think. Do we want to start that or do we want to start moving across Neptune? Hmm. Not a lot of time left. Um, I'm going to start moving across your Neptune. Quest is available in your codex. Um, so, this is the path that I would suggest for most people is to go the bottom route and go past the index. Um, you will want to unlock the index effectively. Uh, the index is what I've talked about in the past as like pretty much invalidates all need for credits. So once you make it to the index, you will pretty much never need credits ever again um, in Warframe. You can always just go back to the index, farm it up more. The index rewards a ridiculous amount of credits very quickly. Uh, so that's pretty much the premier way to get credits. So we will be going into the index and kind of farming that up, but until we do that, we will want to be making our way across Neptune. Uh, let's see. So we did also unlock the second dream. I do want to just note it. Uh, we're not going to be going to do it this part. We will be doing it next part, um, but yeah, there you go. So that's how you unlock the second dream. I think we also unlocked a gamma core weapon blueprint. Um, it's an okay weapon, not a great weapon. I, it's kind of more of a very specific weapon. It's kind of like a laser beam sort of weapon. You would think from the look of it that it's more like a, a blaster from like Mega Man, for instance, but uh, it's not really. It's more of a laser beam, so it's not great in my opinion. So They did just recently upgrade those, a lot of beam weapons, but eh, I still don't think that that one's really of note compared to a lot of the other ones you could get your hands on. We'll do this capture, I think we'll do maybe one more mission, and that will kind of close out this part. Um, of course next part, I don't really think I need to worry about saying it, but spoilers for the second dream. So if you're still not there, maybe you'll want to skip next part and uh, wait until you get there. You are here on a capture mission. You must find, capture, and extract our target. So you can kind of see as well that our weapons uh, transfer out of us. I think I've talked about it before. They kind of go into the ether, so it doesn't look like we're carrying all of our weapons all the time. Um, that was a thing we did in the last part, I think it was. Oh, and uh, for Warframe, even though the story isn't like massively fleshed out yet, I would highly recommend that you kind of take it at your own pace and do the Capture missions yourself before you like look anything up. Um, we need our subject brought back alive. Until you get to maybe the War Within mission, which then it's kind of good to do a little bit of research on the War Within, uh, just so you make the kind of the right choices. Um, found a target. Them but they most escape. of the other story missions for Warframe, you should kind of go in blind just because it I don't know how to put it. it. It gives you a little bit better impact when you go in blind. And it's not great to spoil the story, because there's a lot of cool twists and turns. Um, Mission complete. That's just my general advice. Point. Well done. Just because Corpus Walkers are heading while it isn't location. very fleshed out, it is kind of entertaining. 
it does definitely have a very good hook um, in a lot of the missions as to like the different things you can do and your abilities in general. Plus you unlock a lot of different things as you kind of progress and um, if you're kind of going in at the very end of the game or you're seeing a lot of high level players for instance um, a lot of them will have abilities you just haven't unlocked yet uh, and it's kind of best to experience and learn about those abilities yourself uh, before you really worry about uh, how they're used and things of that nature effectively I'm saying this is one of those games where it's not great to spoil the story for yourself just because you run out of things to do quicker uh, so it's kind of better to enjoy the story yourself go through it and uh, kind of blind and then come back to anything that you feel you might have missed out on at a later date let's do one more mission because I think that's what we got time for a rescue yeah we can do a rescue and um, that'll close us out we won't have enough time to make it to the index in this part but we will come back uh, to doing missions across Neptune after we complete the second dream uh, which I don't think the second dream will last more than two parts I don't think it's that long so that is something to note uh, some missions in Warframe is a here that is vital may take more than one part uh, specifically some quests that is may take more than one part in that uh, eventuality I will be doing those in like kind of sets as in I won't be waiting a week in between doing the recordings I'll be doing them all at once just because sometimes that's how the quests work um, you can't stop some quests in progress effectively so we'll see how that kind of all comes out and works that in uh, when we get there uh, for the moment though I don't think the second dream is going to be that sort of situation the war within is definitely a situation where we might run into that, but um, don't think we're gonna run into that with uh, the second dream just yet. I say all this, uh, but it's so hard to determine how much time certain things take, uh, especially when you've got to deal with some crazy stuff overall. Uh, there's some just crazy events that uh, we're gonna run across in the story that it's so hard to plan for, it's so hard to predict effectively how long it would take us. So I have no idea on that case. Oh, we gotta rush. Gotta save the hostage. I fudged that up. There we go. Pop in that door. Iron skin, come on. Let's uh, activate. Let's pop this one open and then we'll maybe use a siphon for the next one. Okay, we're good. Let's go home. Oh my gosh. Ouchie. You need to bring the captive to safety. Protect them at all costs. We're gonna stomp. I didn't think that the corpus would take us down that quickly, but uh, it goes to show that the corpus is upgraded here on Neptune. There's definitely a lot more and they're a lot tougher as the levels go up, of course. We definitely don't want to give the hostage a uh, secondary, as he's pretty much just going to get himself killed. Uh, enemies will more likely target him. I think I've talked about that in the past, though. And we're going to rush through, and we're good. So, if our intensify was a little bit higher level, and our rhino had a maybe a bit more health, we might have survived, and armor, we might have survived that a little bit better. So maybe we need to look into getting better intensify and steel fiber as some of the first things we do um, with any endo or credits we get in the future. Alright, so that'll close us out for the moment. Uh, let's see, what do we need for this? Complete the second dream, defeat the hyena pack, complete a spy mission with three successful data extractions. Okay. So yeah, all that for the Pluto Junction shouldn't be too hard. After we complete the second dream, we'll be pretty much sitting pretty. Uh, but until next time, goodbye.